So what we're going to do now is we're going to eviscerate, we're going to remove the GI tract from the abdomen. So I've had to cut away our triangular ligaments of the liver here to separate it back so that I could come down here and cut the caudal vena cava as it came through. Now I reflected down the viscera here. Here we can see that right kidney. Uh, this may be the adrenal gland up in here. We have our caudal vena cava there. Here we can see our caudal mesenteric artery going into our descending colon. And this is probably branches off our cranial mesenteric, but I'll have to go to the other side to really expose that aorta. So over on this left side, I'd had to break down a whole lot of connective tissue attaching the spleen and the rumen to this dorsal wall here. We can see here where the esophagus is coming in. Okay, I'm going to need to cut it there. And you can see here that here's our dangling left kidney. That's probably the adrenal gland. Here I've exposed the aorta. And I'll probably cut it here and just a little bit more caudally here so I can pull all of this GI tract out, but not before I also ligate and transect the descending colon. Okay? So now let's have a look at this massive gastrointestinal tract. Okay, so we're standing on the, the left side of the animal. The spleen always tells you you're on the left. Here we see the liver. Notice it's more on the right because as the rumen grows, it pushes it over to the right side. So cranial here, here we can see where the esophagus is going in at the cardia. So it goes in right at the junction of the reticulum and the rumen. So here we have our ruminal reticular groove. On the inside is gonna be the ruminal reticular fold. Okay, we have Right along here is going to be the left longitudinal grooves. On the inside is going to be left longitudinal pillar. We can see that the superficial leaf of the greater omentum is attaching along that. And then it comes around between the dorsal and ventral blind sacs, which in the goat, there's not much of a dorsal caudal blind sac but a very prominent ventral caudal blind sac. So we have the caudal groove, and then that momentum comes around and runs along the right longitudinal groove. Okay, so this portion here is the deep leaf. This portion here is the superficial leaf of the greater momentum. Between those two is the omental bursa, and we see that in the ruminant, the ventral sac of the rumen is actually within that omental bursa, whereas in our other species, it, it, nothing's in that, okay? So if we follow our two leaves over, see we got the caudal edge of that here. So on the outside is superficial leaf. Inside here is deep leaf. And then they were coming up here to attach on the descending duodenum and the mesoduodenum, the body wall, so that would be creating this pouch here, which is the supraomental recess. Okay, that's where the intestines like to play. Okay, so looking here from this dorsal view, we see our liver, the caudate lobe, with the caudate process, the kidney was sitting right here, so that's the renal depression. We can see our descending duodenum and the pancreas real nicely here. Descending duodenum, as we saw, has this little sigmoid flexure. We have the caudal flexure of the duodenum. Then we have the ascending duodenum. 
So our ascending duodenum is passing by our descending colon, which is in the mesentery here. We have a duodenocolic fold. We can't see that real well. Our ascending duodenum then becomes the jejunum. So this is probably the duodenojejunal flexure. So we have jejunum, and as we saw, the jejunum is quite elaborate. Coming all the way around, let's go over to the right side now. Okay, so here we are on the right side. We have our liver, our right lobe, our quadrate lobe here between where the falciform ligament would be and the gallbladder, our right lobe, and then this caudal aspect here, and mostly this in here, is our caudate lobe with our caudate process. Once again, we have between the liver and the lesser curvature of the omasum. It's going to be our lesser omentum, and this is our greater omentum. Okay, so this is all descending duodenum here. Underneath this lesser omentum, we're not going to be able to see it real well unless we tear it, is going to be our omasum. Okay, so our omasum there, this is once again our reticulum. And all this down here from the ventral body floor on up through here is our abomasum, or our true stomach. Okay, so let's get back to where we were with the jejunum. We reflect our greater momentum cranially to pull that out. And we've got all oh, this jejunum, 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 jejunum. It's a lot of fun. And it's coming over here. Then we have our jejunal flange telling us we're getting close to our ilium. And ah, there's our ilium. Running next to the cecum, that's our ileocecal fold. That's how we define it here. And then the ilium is going to come up here. And if you go caudally, you go into the cecum. If you go cranially, you go into the ascending colon. And the ascending colon has a proximal loop. And then if we flip it over this way, we see that proximal loop then becomes our spiral colon. Okay, so we have centripetal coils going in. At some point in here, it's going to turn around and have centrifugal coils going out. That last centrifugal coil is going to run in here. Oh, there he is. It's really hard to see him where he comes off, but he's going to come off about here. And then he's going to run right alongside of that jejunum. You can see him better running alongside the jejunum here. Remember between the him, the last coil of the centrifugal and the first coil is centripetal. Over on the other side is where we can see the mesenteric lymph nodes. Okay. So then we have a distal loop coming along and at one point He's going to leave here. Let's see if we can find that. Okay, without tearing up this mesentery, we're not going to really be able to find him so much. But he's going to come back up cranial to the root of the mesentery. And then we're going to have our transverse colon going from right to left. And then we have in this fatty mesentery here, our descending colon. Okay, so that is the digestive tract.